الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا ومرشدنا محمد ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما أنفقتم من نفقة أو نذرتم من نذر فإن الله يعلم وما للظالمين من أنصار All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, our sustainer. The one who gave us life, the one who will give us death, and the one who will resurrect us on the day of judgment and give us our just recompense, our just reward, good or bad. May Allah enter, enter us into Jannatul Firdaus. Allah ta'ala has blessed us in many ways. He has given us Iman, the greatest thing we could possibly ask for. Then he made us from the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, the best of all the Prophets. And then he gave us the tawfiq to live our lives as much as possible in accordance with his commandments. <coughs> and so he called us into his house and we are sat in his house gathered so that we might listen to his words, the, the kalam of Allah, the speech of Allah, the Quran. And it is Allah that we ask, that He gives us the ability to take whatever lessons we can and to put them into our lives. Now we've been hearing from Surah Al-Baqarah, the Surah of the Cow. This is the longest chapter of the Qur'an and we know that it was revealed in Medina Munawwara during the beginning time of the Prophet stay in Medina Munawwara. And we heard at the beginning Allah Ta'ala telling us about the Banu Israel and speaking to the Banu Israel directly and reminding them of his favors upon them and not only upon them but upon their forefathers and then he told us about some of the mistakes that they made and these are mistakes that are mentioned not so that we can ridicule them but so that we might take lessons from them because the intelligent one is the one who takes lessons from other people's mistakes so that he doesn't have to make the same mistakes himself. Then we heard some rulings from Allah Ta'ala because of course at the time the Islamic society was being built, it was in its infancy, people needed to know how to live as Muslims, how to behave with one another. So Allah Ta'ala then gave some commandments, some basic guidance on how to live as a Muslim, teaching us about alcohol, gambling, teaching us about salah, about fasting, about capital punishment, about how to do hajj. And then building the society, Allah Ta'ala taught us what sort of person we should marry, how we should choose our spouse, husband or wife. And then, of course, inevitably there will be some marriages that break down. And so Allah Ta'ala taught us how to approach divorce. Because of course, divorce is a very difficult thing, it's a very emotional subject. So Allah Ta'ala taught us how to approach it in the best way. And then we heard again a story from the time of the Banu Israel. The story of Shamuel Ali Salam, Talut, the king of the Jews. And of course Dawud Ali Salam and how he overcame Goliath, Jalut. And then he was allowed to become a king and also a Nabi. And then we heard about how Allah Ta'ala gave some Anbiya, some messengers, a higher rank than others, but then reminded us straight afterwards that they all came with the same message. 
that was of Ayatul Kursi, which came just a couple of ayat after that. And Allah Ta'ala in this Ayatul Kursi, the greatest ayah of the Qur'an, tells us about His majesty, His power, the fact that there is no one like Him. Even though He is in full control of everything, the entire universe, this does not make Him tired. If we were in control of a country, or even, even a small community, or even in charge of a business, then we are tired at the end of the day. And often we will find ourselves asleep before the head hits the pillow. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not overcome with any tiredness. <coughs> subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then we had, La ikraha fi deen. There is no compulsion in religion. We are called upon by Allah Ta'ala to call towards our, our religion, call towards the way of Islam, but with wisdom, with kindness, with goodwill. And there is no compulsion, we must not force anyone. And this was taught to the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, who were filled with Iman, and yet they had their own sons, their own daughters, sometimes their own parents, who had not accepted Islam. And so they felt a yearning that their own kith and kin should become Muslims. But they were taught not to force them, but to call them with kindness. And then we heard the story of Ibrahim السلام, and how he argued with Nimrud, the king of the time, who had disbelieved. And then we heard the story of Uzair السلام, and how he was given death and then given life again to show him how we would be resurrected. And we heard the other story of Ibrahim السلام, regarding the birds and how he split the meat of all those four birds on different mountains and then he called out to them and they all came flying back. And Allah told him that this is the way that my creation will also come back. And then afterwards, the discussion about charity started. And we will continue with this discussion. It's a long discussion from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah ta'ala has given us a complete religion, so He doesn't just, just tell us, give in charity, give your wealth, but He teaches us how to do it. What's the best way of doing it? And the example of the Prophet sallallahu His sunnah teaches us how to approach it, what, what sort of strategy we should adopt in giving charity, subhanAllah. So we had the, 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 the virtues of giving in charity, how you may get 700 or even multiple reward. So if you give one pound in charity, then you may get 700 times that reward, or even many multiple. Allah, Allah's treasures are, are vast. They are boundless. So he can give as much as he wants. And so we should seek as much as we can. We shouldn't limit the amount that we seek from Allah. Because Allah's <coughs> treasures are boundless and so he can give us boundless amounts if he wills. So our intention should be sincere and we should always ask from Allah. And we should do, we should, whatever we give, we give for the sake of Allah. And Allah is teaching us also that if we give, then it will increase. As shaytan ya'idukum al faqr As for shaytan, he promises you poverty. So shaytan is telling you, if you give in charity, then you will become poor. But Allah is saying that if you give, then he will increase for you. Allah tells us further then in the next ayah. وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ نَفَقَةٍ أَوْ نَذَرْتُمْ مِنْ نَذَرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ And whatever you spend from whatever wealth that you spend أَوْ نَذَرْتُمْ مِنْ نَذَرٍ Or whatever promise you make to Allah that you will spend, then Allah knows it. So of course any charity that you give, of course Allah knows it. And we must remember that Allah knows it. And it's if a person is giving something and he's being very quiet and he's not telling anyone else and the person takes it and then he goes away without even thanking him, sometimes we feel hard done by. He didn't even say thank you. 
But of course, we know that we are doing this for Allah. And so we must remember that even if he didn't say thank you, and he may then deny any knowledge of what we have given him later, Allah knows it. So do not despair. Do not think that, no, I don't want to give in charity anymore, because people are very thankless these days. No, we should always give, because of course we're doing it for Allah's sake. أو نذرتم من نذر Or any promise that you make to Allah. And another is where a person says, if Allah allows such and such to happen for me, so if a person says, for example, oh Allah, if you allow me to pass my exams, then I will give 50 pounds in charity. So then if Allah allows him to pass his exams, then he should give the 50 pounds. He has made this promise to Allah. He shouldn't think to himself, I promised Allah, but Allah is the ghani. He, he is self-sufficient. He doesn't need anything from me. He is the one who gave me the money. Why should I then give it to Allah? SubhanAllah, I don't need to because Allah doesn't need all this from me. You know, Allah provides his, his creation and we will find a hundred excuses. But if we have made this promise to Allah, then Allah knows it. Even if we didn't tell anyone else, but we said it to Allah, we made this promise, then we must fulfill this promise. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ Because if no one else knows it, Allah knows it. وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَارِ And the wrongdoers will not have any helpers. Because a helper is not a person necessarily in this world who helps you in a worldly way, in a way regarding your financial situation and so on. But the Ansar really, the true helpers are those who help you with the Akhir. Those people, if you look at the Ansar of Madina Munawwara, they did it because of their love for the Prophet because of their love for the deen. So these were true helpers of the deen. And so they helped the Muhajirin. They didn't think that they're from a distant city, somewhere else. No, they did it for the sake of Allah. So, on the day of judgment, when it will really matter, when you'll really need your friends, and you'll really need the helpers, there'll be no helpers on that day for the wrongdoers, for those people who have gone against the commandments of Allah or who have made such promises to Allah and then not fulfilled them. Because this is, it is a sign of ingratitude as well. If you say to Allah that I will give this much in charity if you allow this to happen, Allah allows it to happen and then you just forget the promise then you are, you are being ungrateful. In tubdu sadaqati fani'immahi If you make your sadaqat apparent, if you, whatever charity you give, if you make it known to the people that you are giving this charity, then that is fine, that is good. There is no harm in this. And there are times when this is perhaps preferred. So in a situation where very few people are giving in charity and there is a need. And so you give openly to encourage others. So others will see and they will think, yes, he's given some, let me give some too. So then of course this will be a good thing for you to do. If at that point you, are, you give it in, in a hidden way, then perhaps this won't be as beneficial. But of course we are weak. We are weak and shaitan overcomes us. And so then shaitan makes us think that, uh, you know, oh, if I give in front of everyone, you know, people will say, oh, mashallah, he's, he's, uh, he's very generous, he's done very well. And so that will make us happy, and so this, then this then muddies the waters, it muddies our intention, and this is not good. So it is, it is better, of course, to give when in hiding, where, where no one else knows, in a hidden way. But there are certain circumstances, as I say, when it is better to give openly. And if you hide it, if you hide your charity that you've given, and you give it to the fuqara, you give it to the, the poor, then that, that is better for you. So giving it openly is fine too, it is good, but to give it in a hidden way is better for you. And the, 
there are many hadith which mention this, the importance of giving it in a, in a hidden way, and the virtues of this, and how valuable this is. There's one hadith from uh, the Musnad of Imam Ahmad which says, it's quite a long hadith, where the Prophet ﷺ said that when Allah Ta'ala created the earth, then it started shaking. So then Allah Ta'ala sent down the mountains. So they were almost thrown onto the ground, and so they became like pegs, in, hidden into the ground, and then the ground became stable. So that um, the, the malaika, the angels, saw how strong and sturdy these mountains were. So then they said, Oh Allah, how strong these, this creation of yours is. Is there anything even stronger than this? So he said, Yes, iron. So then they said, Oh, is there anything stronger than iron? Because of course, with tools made of iron, you can break the mountain. You can break the rocks. So then the angel said, Is there anything even stronger than this? And Allah Ta'ala said, Yes, fire. Because in the because the ironmonger will use fire to then bend the iron. And in this way the fire overcomes the iron. So then they said, is there anything stronger than fire? And Allah Ta'ala said, yes, water. Because with water, you put out the fire. And then they said, is there anything stronger than water? And Allah Ta'ala said, yes, air, the wind. Because you see in the oceans and the seas, how the air and the wind whips up the, the sea. And then they said, is there anything from your creation that is stronger than the wind? And he said, yes. When the son of Adam gives in charity with his right hand and he hides it from his left hand. Imagine the value of giving in charity in a hidden way where no one else knows. Because this is the height of sincerity, where you're only doing it for Allah's sake, no one else knows. And we see in, in the hadith also that Sadaqatu sirri tutfi'u ghadab al-Rabb If you were to think that the anger of the Rabb, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is like a fire, then a hidden sadaqa puts out that fire. And then there's a very famous story of that person who once decided that I want to give in charity. So he went out in the dead of the night and he gave it to someone. He didn't see who it was, but he put it into that person's hand, whatever amount that he wanted to give, and then he went off. And in the morning, people started talking in, in that community that how odd it is that someone gave some charity to that prostitute. So then this man heard this and he thought, oh, you know, this is someone who indulges in evil actions and subhanAllah, oh Allah, you know, forgive me for this, you know, I did it for your sake. Okay, tonight I'll definitely give in charity properly. So again, he went in the middle of the night, and he found someone else, put it in his hand, his or her hand, and then he left. And then again, the next morning, he, he heard the people saying, oh, how odd it is, someone gave charity to this very rich man. So he thought, Ya Allah, I want to give in charity, I want to uh, please you, you know, what should I do here? And so he, then he made another promise, that I will definitely go tonight and give charity properly. So he went again, and that night, and he gave it in someone's hand, in the dead of the night, he didn't know who it was, and then he came back home. And then the next day he heard that the people saying, how odd it is that someone gave charity to that known robber. So then he said, Ya Allah, you, you are most pure of all faults, I, I've tried my best. Ya Allah. And then someone came to him, perhaps an angel of Allah knows best, and said to him, whatever you have given, it has been accepted. And it is possible that through the barakah of what you gave to the prostitute, she may then 
go back and repent to Allah Ta'ala. Through the barakah of giving it to that rich man, he may then think that if someone is giving to me, I should perhaps spend from my wealth in the path of Allah. And regarding the robber, he may also think that I am robbing other people. And of course, if Allah wants to give, then he gives it to me without me having to rob anyone. So because of this, I, that person also might repent from his sin. So there is much blessing, there is much reward in giving in charity. There's no question. وَإِن تُخْفُوهَا وَتُبْتُوهَا الْفُقَرَاءَ فَهُوَ خَيْرُ لَكُمْ وَيُكَفِّرُ عَنْكُمْ مِنْ سَيَّاتِكُمْ And he will wipe away your sins. So if you do this, if you give in charity, whether it's openly or secretly, then he will wipe away your sins. So sadaqa wipes away sins. Now there are two ways of looking at this ayah. One way is to say that this, where Allah is saying, and Allah will wipe away your sins, this is in relation to both giving openly and secretly. Or it could be in relation to the last bit where Allah said, and if you give secretly, then this is better for you and Allah will wipe away your sins. This, is, this has been left open and so we should leave it open. That whoever gives in charity openly or in a hidden way, then Allah will wipe away their sins. Allahu bima ta'amaluna khabir And Allah knows that which you do. Allah is reminding us here. In the very next ayah, if you remember in the last ayah, Allah said, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ and Allah knows it. He knows what you have given. He knows what promises you have made to Allah. And Allah is reminding us here also, Wallahu bima ta'amaluna khabir. And Allah knows that which you do. So reminding us that we don't need to show anyone else. Because Allah knows what you're giving in charity. So you don't need to show anyone. لَيْسَ عَلَيْكَ هُدَاهُ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ if you recall the ayah that was mentioned previously, لا إكراه في الدين There is no compulsion in religion. Here Allah Ta'ala once again tells us that to give guidance is not upon you. It is not for you to give guidance. Allah is the one who gives guidance. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ And Allah is the one who guides whomsoever He wants. And we know that the Prophet used to be very saddened whenever he gave someone the invitation to Islam and that person didn't accept. And he would worry about it all the time. And so Allah Ta'ala even says, That it, it is very close that you will harm yourself, you will destroy yourself out of worry because they don't accept and they don't come to me. But this is not for us. وَمَا عَلَيْنَا إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ It is only upon us to openly pass on the message. Then, of course, guidance comes from Allah. And there are many different ways of passing on the message. And we should do it with wisdom, with goodwill. Allah says in the Qur'an, اُدْعُوا إِلَى سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ Call towards the way of your Lord with hikmah, with wisdom. Elsewhere in the Quran he says, Qul sabili ala basira. Say that this is my path, I call towards Allah. Ala basira with insight, with wisdom. Ana waman ittabani, not only me, the Prophet is saying not only me, but also those people who are following me. So this is the way that we do this. If we are calling anyone towards Allah, we do it with wisdom, with kindness. If we are harsh straight away, then the people will run away from us. As Allah says regarding the Prophet to him, that if you were very strict and very harsh and hard-hearted, then they would have run away from you, the Sahaba. But of course, they loved him dearly. They loved him more than anything else. What? What? What was it about him? It was his nature, the way that he brought them in, the love that he showed them. So then they reciprocated. 
وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَلِأَنفُسِكُمْ And whatever you spend in goodness, then this is for you. So once again, if a person thinks that he is giving in charity and so he will become poor, this is not true. Because if anything, he is doing it for himself. He is not doing anyone any favors. By giving in charity to the, to the person, to the recipient, that person may benefit there. But of course, if you didn't give it to him, Allah was going to give it to him in some other way, through another means. We are not needed by Allah to give this, to give whatever it is to that person. But Allah has chosen to use us as a means. And so we should be grateful for this. And of course, when we give in the path of Allah, then we are doing it for ourselves, it is for our own benefit. وَمَا تُنْفِقُونَ إِلَّا بْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ And whatever you spend, it is only for the sake of Allah. It is only to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this is how we should be. Allah is making a statement here. And whatever you spend, it is only to achieve the pleasure of Allah. Allah is saying to the believers that this is your state of affairs, this is how you are. And so this is how we should be. We should think to ourselves, when we give in charity, is this why we do it? وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ يُوَفَّ إِلَيْكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تُظْلَمُونَ And whatever you spend in goodness, then it will be given back to you. وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تُظْلَمُونَ And there will be no... You'll be, you'll be given back to, on the Day of Judgment and also in this world and you, you, there will be no... you will not be wronged. So you will receive it back. Who should we give this to? To the poor. And then Allah will explain who they are. They are the people who have been restricted in the path of Allah. So at the time they were the Sahaba who had come from Mecca and they had left everything behind and they had gone to Medina Munawara. And they had nothing, they were restricted in the sense that perhaps they were weak, perhaps they weren't able to go and fend for themselves, they weren't able to earn for themselves. They weren't able to travel to seek wealth, to seek their daily bread. And the ignorant one may think, if he were to look at these poor people, that they are, they are self-sufficient, they are very rich. That this is because of the self-restraint that they show. They don't go seeking from everyone but they seek from Allah and they are patient. These are the true fuqara, they are the true masakeen. لَا يَسْأَلُونَ تَعْرِفُهُمْ بِسِيمَاهُمْ And you will recognize them from their signs, the sign on their face. And they may not have any overt sign, they may of course be poor and they may be malnourished and you might see that in their faces. Uh, they may have lost weight, but there won't be any overt sign, but you will see them from the sign. And what Allah is mentioning here is the sign that a mu'min sees. The Prophet has said, That fear the insight of the mu'min, of the believer. The believer is often able to see things Perhaps he has an insight into things that someone else might not. He may be able to see beyond the exterior. And this is something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah, the Prophet is saying that he is able to see with the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a nur that is a light that Allah ta'ala places in him, this wisdom that he has. And so this is what, Inna fi dhalika la ayatin lil mutawassimeen, Allah says in the Quran elsewhere. That there, in this, there are signs for those people who have this insight, 
who are able to look beyond the, what is apparent and they can see. So it is for us as believers to seek such people. These people who are not going around everywhere and seeking wealth and asking for a morsel here, a bit of food here and there. They don't go and ask people harshly, they don't force people to give them wealth or any food or any money. And the Prophet through his example, we see how he used to try to make people self-sufficient. There's the very famous story of a Sahabi who came to the Prophet and said, Tell us, well, I have nothing. I'm, I'm very poor. So the Prophet had a, a sheet, a, a garment that he then asked the people around him that who is it here that is willing to buy this from me? So someone came, one of the Sahaba came and he bought it for, from him for two dirhams, for two silver coins. So then the Prophet said to this man that take these two dirhams, take one of them and spend it on your family for, for your immediate needs. Take this other one and go and buy an axe. So then he went and got the, the metal for the axe and the wood and the Prophet himself then took the, the wood and put it into the, the metal of the axe, the iron of the axe and then he said go and chop some trees and get some wood and then sell it. And then from that, spend on your family and then try and save as well. And don't come back to me in less than 15 days. So then, 15 days later, he comes and subhanAllah, Allah Ta'ala had blessed him. And the Prophet said to him, this is better for you than to seek from people. Because people may give or they may not give. And so what the Prophet taught him was self-respect and self-sufficiency. And this is perhaps the way that we should also approach our charity. We shouldn't simply be giving here and there, but we should perhaps have a strategy. Look at what we're doing with this money so that we can make people self-sufficient, so that then they don't need to seek charity anymore. Again, Allah is saying, وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ And whatever you spend out of goodness, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ So Allah knows it. He is all knowledgeable about anything that you spend out of goodness. And in the next ayah, Allah Ta'ala says, and we see that there is one Sahabi who mentioned that Ali radiallahu an had four dirhams. He spent one in the morning, during the day. He spent one at night. He spent one openly and he spent one in a hidden way. So regarding this, it is said by the Sahabi that this ayah came. As for those people who spend their wealth بالليل, at night one nahar and during the day, sirran in a hidden way, wa ala niyatan and openly, falahum ajruhum in the rabbihim. So there, for them there will be their their reward with their Lord. For them will be their reward with their Lord, with Allah Ta'ala. And this tells us that we don't need anyone else's reward. We don't need anyone else's praise. The reward of Allah is sufficient. It is more than enough for us. Of course, a person may think that I need reward in this world and in the hereafter. What will happen to me on the Day of Judgment? What will happen to me in this world? If I give in charity, will I become poor? Will I then become needy? And then we have these fears. So Allah is saying, وَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ there is no fear upon such people who give in these four ways. During the day, during the night, openly and in a hidden way. There's no fear upon them of poverty. And they will not be sad on that day when there will be many people who are sad. On the day of judgment. 
and they will be not be sad and they will not regret what they gave because they will see the reward on that day. So may Allah Ta'ala make us from the, amongst those who give in charity and those who spend in His path only for His pleasure. May Allah make us from amongst those people who spend during the day, during the night openly and in a hidden way so that we might achieve our reward with Him and we might find ourselves with no fear and of course no grief on that day, on the Day of Judgment. Mm -hmm.